Welcome to the Awaken, Heal, and Thrive podcast. This episode is called Three Ways to Tame Obsessive Thoughts. I'm Benjamin Bernstein, and this episode is sponsored by my book and audiobook, the number one Amazon bestseller called Instant Divine Assistance, your complete guide to fast and easy spiritual awakening, healing, and more. Just go to Amazon and search for Instant Divine Assistance or click the link in the show notes. I publish both audio and video versions of Awaken, Heal, and Thrive, so take your pick. The video versions are on my YouTube channel called Benjamin Bernstein Podcasts. I drop new episodes of this podcast twice a month. Be sure to subscribe to Awaken, Heal, and Thrive wherever you get it. And if you haven't already, be sure to click the link in the show notes for a free chance to win a full year of my Awakening Plus online membership. I announce a new winner every month. In fact, I announce our January 2024 winner later in this episode. Keep your ears peeled if you have entered. All right, three ways to tame obsessive thoughts. One is to do the embodied awakening invocation, which I'll detail in a minute. Another is to do a specialized invocation called the two-story thoughthouse visualization. And a third is to consciously work with the part of you that's repeating the thought in a way that lets it be in the background, but not a problem. So let's go into all three of those in detail. So one way is to simply do my embodied awakening invocation. I've discussed this frequently on this podcast. If you'd like to check it out, the original episode of this podcast, number one, is a how-to on doing the embodied awakening invocation. Also, you can go to astroshaman.com slash invocations. And there I have a free course on how to do this. I lead you through it step-by-step step on both the podcast episode and the freebie on my website. Take your pick, whichever one you want to go to. In a nutshell, to do the embodied awakening invocation, which calls your higher self to merge with you in your human body, you simply say maximum embodied awakening that serves highest good, please. You relax, it comes in. And once that really aligns with you, which it does for most people on the first try, the qualities that it brings to you include no mental chatter. This invocation has many other profound benefits as well, but for the purposes of this podcast episode, which is about working with obsessive thoughts, the fact that one of the effects of the embodied awakening invocation is to eliminate mental chatter, no matter how chattery it was a moment ago, is really powerful. This works because your higher self doesn't have mental chatter. And once it merges with you, you share its consciousness. You become a human higher self hybrid. So that's one way to have no obsessive thoughts. A second method is the two-story thought house visualization. In fact, this is the only one of my major invocations that I haven't yet gone into detail on on this podcast. So let me tell you how it works. By the way, this is described in full detail also in my book, which I've mentioned and which I'll tell you a bit more about later. Basically, you notice there's this endless stream of chatter or this obsessive thought that just keeps going and going and going. First, I recommend doing the embodied awakening invocation, maximum embodied awakening that serves highest good, please. Relax, be fully passive. Let your higher self merge with you to the greatest extent that serves your highest good. And that alone, as I said, might get you to the state of no mental chatter. But if it doesn't, then here's the next step. You do an actual visualization. You imagine you're on the ground floor of a house in the big entryway and you and whatever obsessive thoughts you're having are all hanging out there at the same level. Then you walk up the stairs and you go to this balcony overlooking the area where you were just at. And there's those thoughts down there chattering away. And you watch them from a level up. The trick here is that you're the witness of the thoughts, but you are not thinking them. From this perspective, you see, wow, these thoughts are fueling themselves. They're little independent thought entities running their own show down there. And as you watch them without engaging without talking to them, without thinking related thoughts, just being the pure witness of the thought, your pure consciousness watching thought, then eventually the thoughts slow down and stop and those little thought beings just pop out of existence. So it's an observation method, watching the thoughts. There's other spiritual methods that talk about like sitting on the riverbank, watching the water flow by, or watching the clouds go by overhead. There's other metaphors you can use, but it's all the same idea. So just uh, witnessing the thoughts without engaging with them can quickly make them lose their power. And that's the second method. There's a third method too. And this is to recognize that you have different parts of yourself. And one of those parts is generating the thoughts. Another way to think about it. 
So this is uh, drawn from the wisdom of internal family systems therapy. Its basic teaching is you have one self and many subpersonalities. The one self is the awakened self, in my opinion, and you have dozens of little subpersonalities. Some of them act like full-on little humans with complex personalities. And so what you can do is if this thought just won't stop, you can speak to the part of you generating the thoughts and say, hey, I see you're really uh, going with that thought. Would you mind uh, just calming and not thinking that so much? And you can see if it's willing to stop voluntarily. And sometimes a simple, kindly phrased request will do that. But if the thought keeps on going, even after you request that, what you can do is just say, okay, you're going to keep it going and that's fine. And I am not the victim of this thought stream. I am actually self at a level higher than the thoughts. And you can say, okay, I'm going to acknowledge that this thought is running in the background. And I'm just not going to put my attention on it. It's okay. It can be part of the background, part of the scenery, but I'm going to put my attention where I want it to be. And if I occasionally get sucked into the thought, as soon as I realize it, oh, I just bring my attention back to where I want it. I did this recently. I was on a hike and I realized that I had this song going. It's, it's the song Cry, C-R-Y by David Maxim Michik, one of my all-time favorite progressive rock artists. And the song just would not leave my head. Damn, he wrote it well. And these melodies just, I kept hearing the whole song in my head over and over. And it was just, I love the song. And it, but I just, you know, I wanted to be in nature, experiencing nature, but the song was just on endless replay. And after trying a couple of different things, I said, well, I guess it's just going to play and that's okay. And after talking to the part of me that was replaying it, it just kept running. I said, okay, that's fine. And I just allowed the song to be my background music on my hike, but I put my attention on, you know, my steps and the, the beautiful woods around me. And amazingly, after a while, the song just faded out and I didn't realize the moment it happened, but after a while, I realized, well, you know, that, that song's not playing anymore. That's interesting. So if nothing else works, accept the repetitive thought or the repetitive song or whatever's going on and don't fight it. There is a golden rule, which you resist persists. So that thought may just keep playing as long as you keep fighting it. You're feeding it energy. But if you just say, okay, you be there, fine. Be in the background. That's fine with me. I'm going to put my attention elsewhere. Uh, amazingly, after a bit, that thing might just fade out for lack of energy from you. So it's worth a shot. So again, three ways. One is to do the embodied awakening invocation. Once the higher self merges with the human self, that can automatically bring a state with no mental chatter. Second is to do the invocation specifically built for curing obsessive thoughts, that two-story thought house visualization I told you about. And those first two are, again, fully described in my book, Instant Divine Assistance. And thirdly, you can just let it be there in the background and put your attention elsewhere. So I hope that helps you the next time you've got thoughts running that you would rather not either be there at all or that you don't want to be your focus. Also, I'm excited to share the newest review for my book. This is a five-star review on Goodreads from Fran, who titles her review, Best Book Ever. She says, quote, After years of searching, instant divine assistance has given me the tools I need to instantly achieve a state of awakening I never thought possible. Using these invocations daily has already improved my life in many ways. I am so grateful for finding Benjamin and his book. End quote. Thank you, Fran. That's so sweet. As I mentioned earlier, my book's complete title, 15 words, is Instant Divine Assistance, Your Complete Guide to Fast and Easy Spiritual Awakening, Healing, and More. If you like to listen, my audiobook is free if you are not yet an Audible member. And if you have Amazon Prime, you get my audiobook plus another one for free. Click the audiobook link in the show notes to take advantage of this wonderful promotion. Instant Divine Assistance is also available as an ebook, paperback, and hardcover. Click the link in the show notes to check it out on Audible or Amazon or read it in Kindle Unlimited. Also, would you like to speed up your healing and awakening as part of an uplifting community with hundreds of dedicated awakeners? Then check out Awakening Plus, the online membership that can put your personal transformation into high gear. You can choose from about a dozen Zoom calls every month, as well as an ever-expanding archive of more than 600 events that can profoundly change your life. You'll also benefit from three major courses and much more to help you awaken, heal, and thrive. To find out more, click the link in the show notes or visit awakeningplus.com. That's awakeningplus.com. I mentioned at the top of the show, I'm announcing the winner of a free one-year membership to Awakening Plus. The winner is Kim. 
K-I-M, the only Kim who has entered this drawing with an email address at ymail.com. That's Y-M-A-I-L.com. If that's you, Kim, pop me an email, benjamin at astroshaman.com. We will get you set up with your free year of Awakening Plus membership. Congratulations. And to everybody, thank you so much for being here. Once again, I'm Benjamin Bernstein, and we are wrapping up. Please leave me a five-star rating, review, or comment wherever you get this episode so others can also awaken, heal, and thrive. And be sure to click the link in the show notes for a chance to win a full year of my Awakening Plus online membership. Thanks again for spending this time with me. I wish you infinite blessings.